Hello guys, this is Raptamon132 here and welcome to, once again, to another blind reaction to fan-made fan -made work of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Uh, today, I'm actually going to be reacting to something a little bit different this time. This is actually, uh, a, back this is actually a backstory to a YouTube user that I'm subscribed to and he's just released it, so I'm going to take the time to uh, look at it. It's called Memories of the Equestrian Wolf, Chapter 1, Dr. Wolf Origin Story. And uh, in, in case you're wondering who this uh, Dr. Wolf is, he is a, um, an MLP analyst and uh, like reviewer, and he also does a bit of voice acting as well. He's known for having a, uh, a wolf OC, that, um, a white albino wolf OC, that uh, works like a psychologist or psychiatrist. And like, in my view, he's kind of like the Roger Clinton of uh, the Brony community due to his, to his voice, like the sound of his voice makes you just want to listen. So uh, it's something that I can compare to a... Uh, to some, to a um, news reporter that um, that we have in Australia, this his name Roger Clinton. To me, he has a voice similar, like has a interesting sound to his voice, similar something that I see in Roger Clinton. So um, yeah, so and recently, like anyway, uh, like I said, he's um, got a uh, he's just released this new. Um, fan fiction and sort of like a dramatic reading and it's like a origin story of his uh, OC character. So um, yeah, I'm going to take a look at it and uh, see what see what it's like. And just so you know, like where I am, it was post like this was uh, posted about a few, about 15, 20 minutes ago. And uh, so I'm going to check it out and do a blind reaction to it. So, yeah, anyway, let's begin with uh, the first chapter. Here we go. Memories of the Equestrian Wolf Written by Godzilla Wolf With artwork by ah. Estival Equinox Chapter 1 Memories of Master See what I mean? If I am to tell you my voice. story I think it is important for you to know that I was not always the teacher or doctor that I am today. In fact, helping ponies with their everyday problems in this office has been a fairly recent change in my life. Before then, I had traveled the world with a dragon. And before that, I had spent all of my time reading books without knowing what I was looking for. And before then, well, even I don't know all of the details. My memory of such times is fragmented. Some memories are clear, others are in a fog. But that's probably because I was a very different sort of creature then. I did not wear clothes, I did not speak words, I didn't even walk on two legs. In fact, at the time, I didn't even comprehend such things. I was just like any other wolf. My earliest memories should have been happy. After all, it is only natural for wolf pups to be born in the spring and spend their youth enjoying their first summer. Or so I've heard. I did not experience these things myself. For me, there was no spring or summer. It was always cold, so very cold. It seemed as though winter would never end. In all my youth, I never once saw the sun clearly, always through thick clouds and heavy snow. And even now, I could not fathom as to why. But that did mean my family could not have lasted long against such an unyielding blizzard. I could not say what happened to each of them. I only remember that I had been left alone, freezing, 
starving. That is, until he found me. To this day, I could not say why he had taken pity on a small and weak creature such as myself. I do not know how he came to find me. All I remember was hearing the crunching of snow under his hooves. I looked up, and he was there, towering over me. I remember at first believing him to be a large member of my kind, because he was covered with fur. Imagine my surprise when he took off the fur on his head to reveal a creature my young eyes had never seen. But he took me in, nursed me back to health, kept me warm and safe. He took me inside what I had always thought was a large den made of stone wow. with a bright light coming from inside. The first real light I had ever experienced, and I was cold no more. That is all I remember, but it is one of the more vivid memories I have of that time, perhaps because the concept of warmth was so rare to me, and yet so fundamental to survival that even young I realized how important my rescue was. Wow. I can actually, sorry to pause it for a minute, but I just wanted to say that that from what I can make out, it sounds like that his character was was born somewhere like uh, sim somewhere similar to the Himalayas or Tibet, like the Tibet like the Tibetan mountains or something. And I'm interested to find out who this pony was that that found him. Anyway, uh, let's continue. Oh, actually, before I do. You can probably uh, understand what I mean that his, about his voice that I mentioned. Well, actually, no, I shouldn't. Uh, well, actually, I'll I'll probably explain it after the uh, blind commentary, but or at the end. But uh, yeah. Anyway, let's continue. Only when I was still with my family did I have even the vaguest recollection of being warm before that time. And though I was so very glad to be alive. I still felt so very alone, for this savior was quite unlike anything I had seen before. Where I had paws, he had flat stumps. Where my teeth were sharp, his were dull. He had two sets of fur, one long that he could remove and one much shorter he couldn't, while I only had one long coat. But I never could have imagined just how different we really were, until the day he lowered his horn to touch my forehead. A bright light flashed before my eyes. I felt great pains throughout my mind. And though I did recover from this sort of spell, as I would eventually learn to call it, the process continued on a daily basis. And each time, he would speak to me with strange sounds always looking hopeful at first, and then frustrated and angry. Or perhaps at first he was just hopeful and later he became frustrated and angry. Or sometimes he was frustrated, others angry, others hopeful. I cannot tell for certain if every session was the same, or each different and they're simply running together. But one day, I was listening to the sounds of my master and understood them. I cannot tell you how many sessions it took, or if the understanding was all at once in a great realization, or over multiple sessions slowly forming together, but I did begin to understand what he meant. He seemed to become more hopeful as he noted me becoming more attentive. I began to understand the sounds were called words, and they were to him and his kind what barks, yips, and howls were to mine. I learned his body language as well. The first thing I can remember him teaching me was that nodding meant I understand, and shaking my head meant I do not. Well, not exactly in those words. I knew only the concept, 
like I knew wagging my tail meant I'm happy. But when I first nodded in response to a question that I cannot recall, he repeated it, and I repeated my response. I was taken back by this. You must understand, being able to grasp what was not instinct was something I hadn't been capable of doing before. My thoughts had always been simplistic, straightforward. Things like, this meat smells good, I should eat it, or this creature is pack leader, I follow him. Those things I comprehended. This was a completely new experience. I suppose narrow may be a better term for my reaction. I'm sorry if that is incredibly vague, but imagine if a blind pony woke up one morning and could make out the color of one object in the room. That is what it was like to be me in that moment and it is a vivid image imprinted my on God. my mind ever since, even after all these years. As the days drew on, so did the spells. I began to understand more and more. I learned more words, though I'd yet learned how to speak. Two words I knew quite well were master and wolf, and that master was the pony, as I'd come to know he was called, and wolf was me. I do not believe I even knew what a I name see. was. Perhaps I heard his and didn't grasp its meaning at the time. I can't remember. Nor do I remember the first words I actually spoke. I did not begin as capable of speech as I am now. Far from it. If you heard my voice then, you would not recognize it as me. It was not a matter of age. It was a matter of structure. As I said, once I was no different from any other wolf. But while it was far from perfect, I was able to understand and make myself understood. And I believe that was the point Master desired I reach before moving to the next step of his plans for me. Come to think of it, that's actually very inventive. Yeah, sorry to pause it again, but, um, you know, like saying that, um, well, what he said just before, that he can't, like, when speaking, like saying that if you, like, and he actually said, and I quote, if you would have heard my voice uh, from then, you would not recognize it. That's actually very inventive, like it's using the structure of a, um, like of a person that that uh, couldn't talk, like um, like for example, some person that suffered from a horrible accident and affected their voice box, and they had to learn how to how to talk again. It's sort of that's what it, it kind of uh, resembles. Like it's kind of like a resemblance of that kind of thing. That's very inventive and creative. Anyway, um, let's continue. Now, there was another pony present with Master. Like Master, I do not know his name. In fact, I know even less about that stallion than I do Master. All I know is that Master seemed to spend a considerable amount of time with him working on spells and books. And I remember my instincts associating Master's behavior towards this pony as akin to how a beta wolf would see its alpha. I also recall the other pony had more hair on his face than Master, even when he didn't wear on his, his second coat. Other than that, he was simply Master's Master, and nothing more. One day, Master presented me to this other pony. Looking back, I think my Master began pridefully, then became disappointed and then ultimately angry. The other pony, he looked at me with emotions that I did not understand much of as I was so young. They may have been worry, perhaps even pity. I cannot say for sure, but what I can say is that the two argued. Any wolf or dog worth its salt can understand Master is upset, and I was no different. 
Like any good companion, I tried to comfort Master, but I was ignored. I do not recall all of the details of what transpired next. I remember Master collecting our things and bidding me come. I remember hesitating. While seeing our things be packed up was new and strange, I hadn't been in that frozen expanse outside of that place since my arrival, as short a time as that had been. Yes, it was still winter. I had sometimes gotten a look outside of the windows hey. on occasion. The uh, snow never ceased. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. I just noticed something. This thing. That looks familiar. Oh, wait a minute. The mentor of I'm starting to I'm starting to realize something. That uh this guy that uh step master's uh mentor. Ah, oh, I think I know who it, who his mentor is. And if my uh and from that uh, coat that's hanging up there, or with the star patterns, I think I know who his master is. I'm starting to think that this guy is the is the apprentice of Star Swirl the Bearded. But hang on, if if this is the time of Star Swirl the Bearded, that means. Dr. Wolf's character is probably thousands of years old. Well, I don't know, but it's just what I'm speculating because, you know, what he said about his about his master's master having more hair on his face than usual, or than he did, and that star look like that star-looking cloak thing. I'm starting to think that it's Star Swell the bearded. But I, that's what I'm probably wondering. But, um, oh, anyway, uh, let's continue. That is part of what made me so reluctant. I knew outside those walls was a place without warmth, a place without life, a place where I last saw my family. An animal's instinct is to be wary of danger, and there are few creatures, whether sapient or non-sapient, who do not feel anxiety over leaving the only home they ever knew. But Master was the only family I have ever known, the one who'd saved me from death. He was the only pack that I knew, and that overrode my anxiety and fear. Not knowing what awaited me, I followed him out into the bitter, cold, endless winter. For the first time since I'd been saved, I felt the full brunt of the raging blizzard. No more was there a warm fire burning, nor shelter from the roaring winds. It was deafening, an endless roar. The snow was far deeper than I'd ever remembered, and I was still quite small. I remember a distinct sense of Jeez. danger. That storm terrified me in ways I do not think it is possible for me to describe. It was like there was something lurking out there in the snow and white. It was instinct, and instinct isn't always rational. Well, that is true. We traveled far, very far. Each night we found refuge, and Master started a fire. He continued the spells, and began to teach me a new skill each stop. One of these was reading. Master Reading, ingrained huh? in me a sense of that skill being extremely important to what was coming. While it was an entirely new experience for me, I believe it came easier to me than spoken language because it was a constant. A sentence spoken needs to be repeated for you. A sentence read does not. It simply needs reread. I wish I could say the first book I read is one I treasure to this day but I cannot recall even one sentence of it, let alone a title. I've read many, many books in my lifetime. So many that to name them all would take an eternity. <laughs> so, sadly, the first one has been lost in the fog of time. 
I cannot tell for sure how long that journey and those lessons took. I know that it was far longer than our time staying at the master's den. Long enough that I began to grow bigger. But no matter how long or hard the journey became, I never once thought of leaving his side. He was all I had ever known. Canines are known for their loyalty, I suppose. That's As true. we and time marched onwards, I began to notice a serious change in that world around us. The snow slowly ceased. At least that is how I perceived it. I began to see green plants. Well, at the time they looked more of a blue or a shade of gray. I couldn't yet see the color green. But I still knew that they were something new to me. Yes, it is I true, considering full canines clarity are, for the first uh, time in my life. Colorblind. I felt its warm light on my fur. I saw its sister body, the moon, and naturally my instincts drew me to it. Yes, at the time I did howl to it, though these days I prefer sitting out watching the moon while listening to Claire de Lune. <laughs> Master's second fur disappeared for good. Well, I doubt they happened all at once, but that's how my mind recalls it. However, our journey did not end. Finding a warm place where all was green was not what we had come for. What may have been the true goal of our trek, I still did not know even to this day. I can't even begin to guess. But I remember two words, simply due to endless repetition. Library and alone. The shift from white to Library green was alone. not the only change of scenery we were met with. They went from green and mild to sandy and hot. I had never seen sand before in my entire life, at least not vividly enough to stand the test of time and withstand the fog of ages. Now I was surrounded by endless stretches of it, and we'd gone from an endless, unyielding winter to unending heat during the day and far colder nights. Thankfully, Master knew spells to protect us, but all of it still seemed unending. With my growing mind, I began to question how long our supplies would last, how long we'd survive. But I never left Master's side. I knew he needed me. That's I true knew he loyalty. had some purpose for me. And that merely made me more dedicated to remain with him. And eventually, after so many days and nights, the continuous walking finally came to an end. We at long last uh -huh. had arrived. It's the like library a temple. that Master had been speaking of for all that time stood before us. Looks like a large ancient temple. So this is the credits. It is actually really, really good. Tarek, uh, that ah uh, yes, Tarek, that's his brother, if I remember. No problem. What the? You might think that going from a quadruped to a biped is a simple matter of standing up. What's going on? That is far from the truth. Well... What can I say about this? I have to admit, this actually was a, a really good story. Interesting to see that, uh, you know, like uh, Dr. Wolf's um, character having a um, 
you know, like having a a bit of a a bit of a uh, a sad start to life, like born in the in the winter and losing his family. That's actually quite sad. And then some random pony finds him and and takes him under his wing and all of that. That's that's actually nice. Then going off on a journey and going into that temple. I guess that's uh, the first. Yeah, that was the first chapter. Can't wait to see the second chapter. And. Like, due to this story, I only have... Like, there is actually something that puzzles me in this story. And that is, if you remember earlier, I paused it to a certain scene and speculated that the... That the other pony that this, um... Like, the... One that Dr. Wolf calls Master, his men mentor, being Star Swirl the Bearded, just wanted to, in my mind... In, even though that's interesting, that sounds like a little bit of a plot hole. And why is it a plot hole? Like, why, in my view, it's a plot hole? It's because, Star, if I remember, like, I don't really know that much about Star Swirl the Bearded, but I know that he, but I know for one thing that he existed, like, somewhere thousands of years ago. And uh, he's supposed to be like the the Merlin of um, of My Little Pony or Equestria. And so, if Doctor Wolf was born at that time, that means he's probably probably thousands of years old. Although I do have a feeling that if it is. Like, if it isn't a plot hole, if they wanted to make this plot hole, like, you know, to cover this plot hole up, they could, you know, maybe send him back to a, uh, another time, like, you know, like, time travel. Like, I have a feeling that maybe, uh, Dr. Wolf's, um, characters, or his, well, his character at that time, I have a feeling that maybe some stage he might, like, he might put him through a, uh, use a spell to make him, use a spell or some kind of device to make him travel to a, like, to travel to another time to probably save his life from a certain, uh, situation. Kind of like a, uh, a Superman thing. You know how Superman was put into a spaceship and sent to Earth to to be saved? I reckon it's probably going to be like that. So, but until I see the next chapter, I think that part is going to be a plot hole. But, um, but I'll see what time says. And uh, the scene, and also I should say the scenes where uh, Doctor Wolf is um, was hit by those uh, by that magic by his master, that unnamed uh, pony. Something about it reminded me of that movie, um, The Secret of Nim. You know that uh, animated that animated film from 1983 or 82 or 83. It's a, a Don Bruth animated film about, like, based on a book about uh, rats and mice from the uh, National Inter Institute of Mental Health that were used for some kind of experiment. Like, they were injected with something and then they they went through a a changing transformation and, vive, and to many it's considered one of the most frightening scenes of the movie. And then they ended up getting human intelligence and being able to read and speak and all of that. Just something about it reminded me of that. But, uh, yeah. Apart, anyway, I should tell you what I actually think of it. Like, apart from those things about it, I only have two words to say about this 
about the story so far. They are bloody beautiful. I think I might comment that on uh, on uh, Dr. Wolf's video after I do the recording. I'll um, I'll comment to him about that. So yeah, I think this story was actually good so far, and uh, I thought it was interesting. So I can't wait till uh, chapter two, and I might do another blind re might do a blind reaction to that as well. So yeah. I think it's quite good. Anyway, that's it for it. Oh, uh, by the way, I should... Uh, oh, before I go, I'll just uh, uh, say something else. Um, you probably heard, like, you probably heard his voice. Like, you know how I mentioned about, um, about him sounding like... having, like, a, uh, like a voice that makes you want to listen. And... It's something that I can compare to uh, to another per, to an, to another uh, to a celebrity that I know well that I know of, but um, he's a news reporter instead of a analyst and all of that. His name was like his name is Roger Clinton, and he has he had a vo like he has a voice that just makes you want to lin listen instantly when you hear it. So uh, that's what I can compare Dr. Wolf's voice with, is I can compare him to having a voice that makes you just want to listen to, like like Roger Clinton, that's uh, in our, like in where I'm from in Australia. Like if you want to know who uh, Roger Clinton is, I can, uh, like if you want to see some of the footage of Doc of uh, Roger Clinton, I can uh, put a few descript I can put a, a few video links in the description below for you to see. Or for you to check him out, and you can probably compare his voice to uh, Doctor Wolf's voice. So, and you can probably see why I, I can. You can probably see my point why I compare, why I say that Doctor Wolf is like the Roger Clinton of the uh, of the uh, MLP fandom. So uh, yeah. Anyway, that's what I want to say, and a good story, and. I hope to see the next chapter. I hope you enjoyed my blind commentary of Memories of Equestrian Wolf, and hopefully I shall get onto other things as soon as I can when I get the chance, and hopefully look at Chapter 2 when he, re when he does. But until then, thank you all for watching. This is Raptamon132 saying, Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.